The Way to Wealth by Benjamin Franklin, a collection of advice from Poor Richard's Almanac, published by Benjamin Franklin under the pseudonym Richard Saunders. Courteous Reader, I have heard that nothing gives an author so great pleasure as to find his works respectfully quoted by others. Judge, then, how much I must have been gratified by an incident I am going to relate to you. I stopped my horse lately where a great number of people were collected in an auction of merchants' goods. The hour of the sale not being come, they were conversing on the badness of the times, and one of the company called to a plain, clean old man with white locks, Pray, Father Abraham, what think you of the times? Will not these heavy taxes quite ruin the country? How shall we ever be able to pay them? What would you advise us to do? Father Abraham stood up and replied, If you would have my advice, I will give it to you in short. For a word to the wise is enough, as poor Richard says. They joined in desiring him to speak his mind, and gathering round him he proceeded as follows. Friends, said he, the taxes are indeed very heavy, and if those laid on by the government were the only ones we had to pay, we might more easily discharge them. But we have many others, and much more grievous to some of us. We are taxed twice as much by our idleness, three times as much by our pride, and four times as much by our folly. And from these taxes the commissioners cannot ease or deliver us by allowing an abatement. However, let us hearken to good advice, and something may be done for us. God helps them that help themselves, as poor Richard says. It would be thought of a hard government that should tax its people one-tenth of their time to be employed in its service, but idleness taxes many of us much more. Sloth, by bringing on diseases, absolutely shortens life. Sloth, like rust, consumes faster than labor wears, while the used key is always bright, as poor Richard says. But dost thou love life? Then do not squander time, for that is the stuff life is made of, as poor Richard says. How much more than is necessary do we spend in sleep, forgetting that the sleeping fox catches no poultry, and that there will be sleeping enough in the grave, as poor Richard says. If time be of all things the most precious, wasting time must be, as poor Richard says, the greatest prodigality, since, as he elsewhere tells us, Lost time is never found again, and what we call time enough always proves little enough. Let us then up and be doing, and doing to the purpose, so by diligence shall we do more with less perplexity. Sloth makes all things difficult, but industry all easy, and he that riseth late must trot all day, and shall scarce overtake his business at night, while laziness travels so slowly that poverty soon overtakes him. Drive thy business, let not that drive thee. And early to bed and early to rise makes a man healthy, wealthy, and wise, as poor Richard says. Methinks I hear some of you say, Must a man afford himself no leisure? I will tell thee, my friend, what poor Richard says. Employ thy time well, if thou meanest to gain leisure. And since thou art not sure of a minute, throw not away an hour. Leisure is time for doing something useful. This leisure the diligent man will obtain, but the lazy man never. For a life of leisure and a life of laziness are two things. Many, without labor, would live by their wits only, but they break for want of stock, whereas industry gives comfort and plenty and respect. Fly pleasures and they will follow you. The diligent spinner has a large shift, and now I have a sheep and a cow, everybody bids me good morrow. But with our industry we must likewise be steady, settled, and careful, and oversee our own affairs with our own eye, and not too much to others. For, as poor Richard says, I never saw an oft-removed tree, nor an oft-removed family, that throve so well as those that settled be. And again, three removes are as bad as a fire. And again, keep thy shop, and thy shop will keep thee. And again... If you would have your business done, go. If not, send. And again, he that by the plow would thrive, himself must either hold or drive. And again, the eye of a master will do more work than both his hands. And again, want of care does us more damage than want of knowledge. And again, not to oversee workmen is to leave them your purse open.
Trusting too much to others' care is the ruin of many. For in the affairs of this world men are saved not by faith, but by the want of it. But a man's own care is profitable. For if you would have a faithful servant and one that you like, serve yourself. A little neglect may breed great mischief. For want of a nail, the shoe was lost. For want of a shoe, the horse was lost. And for want of a horse, the rider was lost, being overtaken and slain by the enemy, all for want of a little care about a horseshoe nail. So much for industry, my friends, and attention to one's own business. But to these we must add frugality, if we would make our industry more certainly successful. A man may, if he knows not how to save as he gets, keep his nose all his life to the grindstone, and die not worth a groat at last. A fat kitchen makes a lean will, and many estates are spent in the getting, since women for tea forsook spinning and knitting, and men for punch forsook hewing and splitting. If you would be wealthy, think of saving as well as getting. The Indies have not made Spain rich, because her outgoes are greater than her incomes. Away then with your expensive follies, and you will not then have so much cause to complain of hard times, heavy taxes, and chargeable families. For women and wine, game and deceit, make the wealth small and the want great. And further, what maintains one vice would bring up two children. You may think perhaps that a little tea or a little punch now and then, diet a little more costly, clothes a little finer, and a little entertainment now and then, can be no great matter. But remember, many a little makes a mickle. Beware of little expenses. A small leak will sink a great ship, as poor Richard says. And again, who dainties love shall beggars prove? And moreover, fools make feasts and wise men eat them. If you would know the value of money, go and try to borrow some. For he that goes a-borrowing goes a-sorrowing, as poor Richard says. And indeed, so does he that lends to such people when he goes to get it in again. Poor Dick further advises and says, Fond pride of Drew is sure a very curse. Ere fancy you consult, consult your purse. And again, pride is as loud a beggar as want, and a great deal more saucy. When you have bought one fine thing, you must buy ten more, that your appearance may be all of a piece. But poor Dick says, It is easier to suppress the first desire than to satisfy all that follow it. And it is truly folly for the poor to ape the rich, as for the frog to swell in order to equal the ox. Vessels large may venture more, but little boats should keep near shore. It is, however, a folly soon punished, for, as poor Richard says, Pride that dines on vanity sups on contempt. Pride breakfasted with plenty, dined with poverty, and supped with infamy. And, after all, of what use is this pride of appearance for which so much is risked, so much is suffered? It cannot promote health, nor ease pain. It makes no increase of merit in the person. It creates envy. It hastens misfortune. But what madness must it be to run in debt for these superfluities? When you have got your bargain, you may, perhaps, think little of payment. But as poor Richard says, creditors have better memories than debtors. Creditors are a superstitious sect, great observers of set days and times. The day comes round before you are aware, and the demand is made before you are prepared to satisfy it. Or, if you bear your debt in mind, the term, which at first seems so long, will, as it lessens, appear extremely short. Time will seem to have added wings to his heels as well as his shoulders. Those have a short Lent who owe money to be paid at Easter. At present, perhaps, you may think yourselves in thriving circumstances, and that you can bear a little extravagance without injury. But, for age and want save while you may, no morning sun lasts a whole day. Gain may be temporary and uncertain, but ever while you live, expense is constant and certain. And it is easier to build two chimneys than to keep one in fuel, as poor Richard says. So, rather go to bed supperless than in debt. Get what you can and what you get hold. Tis the stone that will turn all your lead into gold. And when you have got the philosopher's stone, make sure you will no longer complain of bad times or the difficulty of paying taxes. 
This doctrine, my friends, is reason and wisdom. But, after do not depend too much upon your own industry and frugality and prudence, though excellent things, for they may all be blasted without the blessing of heaven, and therefore ask that blessing humbly, and be not uncharitable to those that at present seem to want it, but comfort and help them. Remember, Job suffered and was afterward prosperous. And now, to conclude, experience keeps a dear school, but fools will learn in no other, as poor Richard says, and scarce in that. For it is true, we may give advice, but we cannot give conduct. However, remember this, they that will not be counseled cannot be helped, and further, that if you will not hear reason, she will surely wrap your knuckles, as poor Richard says. Thus the old gentleman ended his harangue. The people heard it and approved the doctrine, and immediately practiced the contrary, just as if it had been a common sermon. For the auction opened, and they began to buy extravagantly. I found the good man had thoroughly studied my almanacs and digested all I had dropped on these topics during the course of twenty-five years. The frequent mention he made of me must have tired anyone else, but my vanity was wonderfully delighted with it, though I was conscious that not a tenth part of the wisdom was my own, which he ascribed to me, but rather the gleanings that I had made of the sense of all ages and nations. However, I resolved to be the better for the echo of it, and though I had at first determined to buy stuff for a new coat, I went away resolved to wear my old one a little longer. Reader, if thou wilt do the same, thy profit will be as great as mine. I am, as ever, thine to serve thee, Richard Saunders, July 7th, 1757, The End.